Welcome back to Q Dads. It's me, Ben, and yes, I am here with another episode of Sunny, which just continues to remind me of an adult version of Big Hero 6 as we dive deeper into the seedy underworld of robotics. And yes, although only a 30 minute episode, it does give us a lot of information. And I'm hopefully going to touch on a few little points here for you. But of course, as always, Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe as it really does help our channel to grow. We open the episode with Hime. Now, apologies if I've butchered the pronunciation of that. Uh, I'm purely going off the subtitles alone, so let me know in the comments if I am wrong. Japanese, of course, is not my first language. But we open the episode with Hime, who is at the house of someone who deals with prosthetics and has an abundance of arms and legs that just decorate the shelves. And someone in the back is currently torturing someone so my assumption here is that she's part of the yakuza and she's actually getting a fake finger with a golden fingernail on it and now yes you could assume that this is just ready for later on where she also has her nails done which are of course the same color but then i ask myself the question is there something more to this finger than we realize are we just sitting here with a nice quirky character trait or is there something inside that nail There was a lot of emphasis on it. And yes, I know I'm looking far too much into this, but when everyone is suspicious and a potential murderer, you have to. Masa's mum is preparing the final details for his funeral. And it's great to see here a Japanese game show in the background, which looks like something like AK Bingo, but I'm not sure. Again, the Japanese game knowledge is not the greatest. But we see her giving a few little things to Sunny, including a pearl necklace, which she insists Susie wears at the funeral. Sunny gives these to Susie and she opens one of them, which is in fact the painting of the wolf symbol, the symbol of the dark manual. Now, why would her mother-in-law give her this? And of course, we still don't know what the symbol fully means other than representing some seedy underworld of robotics where sex and murder is absolutely rife. Now, is her mother-in-law behind the whole thing? More on that towards the end. Now talking of sex and murders, we get an absolute hilarious scene where Susie searches the web for this symbol and we learn all about the horrific things that these robots can do. And Sonny says, Now, I thought this clip was very strange and it was very odd for Sonny to mention that that he could have killed Susie by now if he really wanted to. But for some reason, this quirky comedy just hits the nail right on the head and that relationship of Sonny and Susie is just unaffected by that comment at all. Susie then goes to Mixie to understand more about this dark manual and how she can get to the people who know where the code comes from, all in her quest to find Massa. Mixie takes Susie to someone called Takumi, who was one of the ones that were responsible for giving Mixie the code to her sex robot. Now, Takumi has a very nervous disposition and an obvious affection for Mixie. But what happened to him? It's like he's almost been given a shakedown beforehand. He was reluctant to tell Mixie any information, but does name drop to go to a club called Wanted and ask for someone called Tendo. Now, this for me is where the episode gets really interesting. And real bizarre, pretty quickly. Susie and Mixie attend Wanted. And unfortunately, Sonny is asked to stay behind, leaving the two to head through all the back corridors of this facility, not knowing where they're actually going. And we end up seeing what I can presume was Tendo. And it asks Susie if she's here for bot fighting. And of course, Susie goes along with this, not really realising the true extent of what he is asking. But it seems there was a few comments in the background and people watching Susie, which makes me think this was part of their plan and have someone all along in the background leading Susie on this wild goose chase around the city in a hope to obtain Sonny and the secrets to Massa. Anyway, Sonny is then whisked away. And of course, at this point, I do really feel sorry for this robot. And Susie enters the world of bot fighting, which again... As I said at the start, reminds me of an adult version of Big Hero 6, which is just brilliant to see. She has flashbacks of her son and husband pretending to be sumo wrestlers, which also coincide with these two modded robots as they fight to death 
in a robot wars kind of fashion. And this was just brilliant to see. These two clunky robots with clear modifications of saws and flamethrowers. Oh, it was absolutely fantastic to watch. And I kind of want to see more of that in the series moving forward. And of course, as we all expected, the next bot fight in the Junk League is Sunny. And Susie immediately steps up to defend. Now, it was mentioned a few moments before when someone else entered the ring that robots could not harm humans. But then, when someone threatens Susie, Sunny does push this person, which immediately breaks that law. Which is why I still ask myself the question is Sunny the one that killed Massa? This would make sense with this budding friendship between Sunny and Susie, where Sunny is hiding this dark secret, too ashamed to admit the truth. And if you cast your mind back to episode one for a moment in the opening scene, there are two robots, one on the floor next to the body, and one who's number 17, which was attacking someone in a chair. Now, I still think one of these robots is Sunny. It just depends if it was the murderous number 17 or the one lying down trying to protect its owner. Anyway, Susie and Sunny escape the facility before bumping into Hime and knocking off her fake nail. And for me, this scene, it really seemed to deflate real quick. They didn't even put up a fight and it just didn't make sense to me at all. It was almost as the fake finger came off and then that was it. They'd lost the battle. It was really weird to see. I would have expected a little bit more confrontation. But then we end the episode, of course, with the funeral of Massa. And, of course, who walks down to pay their respects? None other than Hime. Susie instantly recognises her, and they share this intense glare together. The episode for me, overall, was good, and it picked up a lot of pace from the first two episodes. And like I say, although it was a 30-minute episode, there's actually a lot of detail that's been crammed into this. We went from Susie and Sunny preparing Massa's funeral, just wanting to know a little bit more information about the Dark Manual, all the way to a full-blown robot underground fight scene, which was just not what I expected at all. And of course, we're still getting these subtle hints that Sunny knows more than it's letting on. But of course, the big question for me at the moment is who is this group behind the scenes and who is watching Sunny and Susie? They seem to be orchestrating a lot of stuff in the background almost controlling the strings on Susie, where she moves, where she goes, the information that she finds out, which again is probably why Hime let her go so easily in the bot fight scene. Maybe she was instructed to do so. Maybe she was instructed to not harm her because the one calling the shots is actually Massa. Now I did say in my last review as well that I do think Massa is behind all of this. Or is it his mum? calling the shots behind the dark manual, not knowing the full extent to Massa, and that she's almost doing this in a hope to finding him. Will we see more of the Yakuza? And when, of course, will we realise that Sonny knows too much? And plus, where is Sonny's son? There's like no mention of her son at all, other than a few flashback scenes. There's, it feels to me like there's not enough concern about him. But, you know, as I always say, it's not about me. Let me know in the comments your thoughts. You know, what did you think of the episode overall? Who do you think is calling the shots behind the scenes? Do you think it's Massa? Do you think it's someone else? And what are your thoughts on the underground bot fighting scene? Did you enjoy that just as much as me? And of course, don't forget to hit that like button. Please do leave me a comment. And more importantly, give us a subscribe. And as always, catch you next time.